الحمد للہ وسلاۃ وسلام الرسول اللہ وعلیٰ علی وصاب اجمعین اما آباد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم کل یا اہل الکتاب تعالی ولا کلمت سوا امبین بین کم اللہ نبد اللہ اللہ ولا نشر کا بھی شعیہ ہوں ولا یہ تخیز آباد دن آباد دن ارب بن ون اللہ فعین تول فقول شد بیانہ مسلم رب شعلی صدری و یسلی عمری وحل العدت ملسان یف کا کولی رسپیکٹ ڈاکٹر احمد ابن سیف الدین رسپیکٹ ایلڈرز اینڈ مائی ڈبرز اینڈ سسٹرز آئی ویلکم آل آف یو ود اسلام گریٹنگز السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ میں پیس مرسی اینڈ بلیسنگز آف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ آف آل مائی ٹی گاڈ بی آن آل آف یو اٹس این آنر اینڈ اے پلیجر فار می ٹو بی انوائٹیڈ فار دا تھرڈ ٹائم for the Janadriya function organized by National Guards under the patronage of King Abdullah. And it's a pleasure for me here once again to be in this kingdom, especially in the city of Riyadh. The topic for this evening's talk of mine is Dialogue Between Religions. Dialogue, according to the Oxford Dictionary, means a formal discussion between two groups, especially to solve a problem or to end a disagreement. In short, dialogue means a discussion between two or more groups to understand one another better. So as the topic today is, dialogue between religions means a discussion between religions to understand each other better. To understand any one particular religion, it is not appropriate to observe what the followers of that religion do. Because many a time, the followers themselves, they are not aware of their religion. Therefore, the best, the most authentic and the most appropriate method to understand any religion is to try and understand what the scripture of that religion has to speak about itself. So today, inshallah, we'll be trying to understand the different religions by trying to understand what the scripture of that religion has to speak about itself. As far as I'm concerned, I am in favor of interfaith dialogue, dialogue between religions. But what we see nowadays, what we have in the recent times, most of the interfaith dialogues that take place, it is nothing but scratching one another's back. And very often, you find religious leaders of different religions coming on the stage and saying that all religions are the same. You may have a Christian religious leader. He will come and say, all religions are the same. Christianity is the same. Islam is the same. Hinduism is the same. You may have one of the Hindu leaders coming and saying that all religions are the same. Hinduism is the same as Christianity, it is the same as Islam, and you may have one so-called Islamic religious leader coming up and saying the same, that all religions are the same. Islam is the same as Christianity or Hinduism. And I personally disagree with such interfaith dialogues, with such dialogues between religions. It is somewhat like the question being asked, that 2 plus 2 is equal to how much? And one teacher comes and says that 2 plus 2 is equal to 3. One teacher comes and says 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. The third teacher comes and says 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. And all the three teachers say that all the answers are alike. All three answers are the same. This type of maths may convince a person in the village who is not aware of mathematics. But a person who even has the slightest knowledge of mathematics, he will surely disagree with such types of teachings. That's the reason such interfaith dialogue saying that all religions are the same, surely they do not have knowledge of the religious scriptures. And I personally disagree with such types of dialogues. I, in fact, being a student of Islam and comparative religion, I know that all religions are not the same. But 
I yet believe in a dialogue between religions. And I have a very simple formula. I tell to the believers of different religions that at least agree and believe that at least one religious scripture is 100% authentic the word of Almighty God. And believe me, no religious person will disagree with this, would not mind believing in it. A Hindu will say that I believe that the Veda is 100% the word of God. The Christian will say, I believe that the Bible is 100% the word of God. And the Muslims, they will say that we believe that the Quran is 100% the word of God. Here, we aren't hurting anyone. No one will disagree with agreeing that at least one religious scripture is 100% the word of God. And after agreeing with this point, I tell them, let's take out the commonalities between these different religious scriptures. And let us agree to follow 100% what is common in these religious scriptures. Whatever is common, let us agree to follow it strictly because all of us will agree that what is common in these scriptures has to be 100% the word of God. What is different, we can discuss tomorrow. It may be right, it may be wrong, we can discuss tomorrow. Today, let us agree to follow 100% what is common in all the religious scriptures. With this formula, no religious person, whether it's belonging to a Hindu faith, or a Jewish faith, or a Christian faith, or a Muslim faith, would feel offended. So today, we'll try and understand the different religions and try and take out the commonalities in these religions so that we can understand different religions better. And this formula, coming to common terms, this formula is not from me, it is from Almighty God. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in the ayah I quoted in the beginning of my talk, from Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 64, Allah says, Kul, ya al kitab, say, O people of the book, ta'alu ila kalimatin sawa im bayna baynakum, come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah na'buda illallah, that we worship none, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Almighty God. That we associate no partners with Him. That we erect not among ourselves lords and patrons other than Allah. If then they turn back. Say, witness. That we are Muslims bowing our will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This verse of the glorious Quran, I call it as the master key for doing dawah. The best technique of conveying the message to different types of people is Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 64. Come to common terms as between us and you. Time will not permit us to discuss about all the various world religions. But inshallah today, we'll discuss the four major world religions. Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, and Judaism. And the verse says, Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah na illallah. That we worship none but Allah. That we worship none but Almighty God. And according to Oxford Dictionary, it says that religion means a belief in a superhuman controlling power, a personal God or gods that deserve worship and obedience. So in short, Religion, according to the Oxford Dictionary, means belief in God. So if you have to understand any religion, first, you have to understand the concept of God in that religion. If you can understand the concept of God in a religion, then only can you understand that religion in the right perspective. <laughs>